Back to this week, I am pleased to be joined by Pastor Robin Lovett Owen, one of several Tennessee pastors here who are opposed to what Governor Bill Lee is doing in supporting Texas and what you are calling the uh, humanitarian issue there that is dehumanizing the people at the southern border. Explain your position. Yes, sir. So with with currently what's going on on our southern border you know there's a lot of politicization politicization that's going on about human beings who are trying to make a better life for themselves and their family and we're very much against uh, governor lee trying to distract from the humanitarian aspect of this you see this in the humanitarian eyes mm -hmm. there's a lot of politicians involved it is becoming a political issue mm -hmm. it is both but mm -hmm. we're also talking about human beings that's right what we're talking about is people who are not different from you or me who want to live in safety and peace who are seeking a better life for themselves and their families, who want to be productive members of our community. The message I guess you were trying to send is while this political fight is going on, the state of Texas and all its supporters, 25 different governors, attorney generals, are supporting them in defying a U.S. Mm -hmm. Supreme Court decision which says you have to remove this razor wire. And not only That's are they not removing it, they're adding more. And we know people have died trying to cross this because of this. Yes, sir, and I'm so glad you bring it back to the issue that's at hand because what we're talking about at its core is a mother and her child drowned in the Rio Grande trying to reach this country. And no matter what you think about immigration policy specifically, all of us can agree that no one should have to die in such a horrific way. There seems to be reticence on the part of politicians to solve this issue. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of complaints. There's a lot of finger pointing. But right now in the U.S. Senate, there is a deal that seems to be just about ready to be voted on, a bipartisan agreement that the House says it will not act on because the Republican frontrunner wants to use this as a political wedge. That seems to be hypocritical on mm -hmm. those criticizing what's going on on the border mm -hmm. and not wanting to fix the crisis. Correct. If you think this is a real crisis, then certainly you want to act quickly. But instead, what we see is people in power who are trying to pit us against one another, who are trying to separate us by race and class to create divisions and use it as election fodder. But people's lives should never be election fodder. There is no question there is a crisis at the border, mm -hmm. that there is a large group of people here. There's not enough mm -hmm. resources. There needs to be some kind of attention paid to this mm -hmm. issue. But what seems to be happening is knee-jerk reactions where, you know, we're doing the political aspect where they're sending people to mm -hmm. democratic states because mm -hmm. well, you, you feel what it's like for us to deal with this. Again, we're back to the humanitarian issue. There seems to be there should be some kind of way for groups to come together to say this is a crisis mm -hmm. that needs to be addressed for the people here and we can decide who gets to stay and who gets to leave later. Mm -hmm. But for right now, we can't just let people mass in mass and have no place to go, no place to for seek relief. Absolutely. And it doesn't have to be a matter of having empathy only for people who live on the border or only for people who need to enter our country to live safely. Certainly, everyone could use more resources in managing the humanitarian aspect of this. But this does not mean we have to resort to cruel and unusual ways of dealing with people who are just trying to seek a better life for themselves. What do you say to the folks who are dealing with this on, on, mm -hmm. a, on a real time basis, the people mm -hmm. in Texas who see this mess and, and the people in other states mm -hmm. that are seeing immigrants come with no places to stay. It is an issue, mm -hmm. but it is also the people that involved that have put themselves trying to find a, a better life, trying to uh, a, avoid being persecuted, trying to avoid violence. Right. So th there's two sides of the story, but also there is a real crisis going on. Absolutely. And I have I have complete empathy for the people who live on the border and who need more support in dealing with this humanitarian crisis. No individual community should have to shoulder the entire burden of a massive global scale humanitarian crisis all on their own. And that's why we need both of our parties to come together for a real action that prioritizes human life over winning elections. And that means putting the um, immigrants who come into our country for a better life to create a safe and stable community that we need to really center helping them resettle in a timely way. You were telling me that your church is housing an asylum group of some mm -hmm. folks here who are trying to find a better life. Can it be solved just by religious groups, by faith-based groups, by nonprofit? The government mm -hmm. has to do something to solve mm -hmm. it. It's just too big. But, but there is a place for help from nonprofits, from religious organizations mm -hmm. that can care for these folks. Absolutely. And our country has a history of partnering the government and resettlement organizations that are largely run by churches. And that is certainly one way that the government can handle this in a way that is timely and humane. I would also say, though, that 
it does require the government taking action because otherwise what we have is a very patchwork, incomplete way of helping people as they enter our country. What would you tell Governor Lee in regards to what you would like to see the group of folks who are supporting what's taking mm -hmm. place in Texas to try to find some common ground. What mm -hmm. would you say to the governor in regards to these people who they're caught in the middle? Yeah. My prayer for Governor Lee is actually that he would come down to the people who live in his in the communities that he serves and that he would meet immigrants to Tennessee, that he would listen to their concerns, and he would learn that they are not dissimilar from any other Tennessee families, that they want safe schools, that they want decent jobs, and that they want to be productive members of our community. And then I would also ask that he works on those issues. Governor Lee has so much power to improve the lives of Tennesseans every day. And instead, he chooses to work on policies that do not serve the people of Tennessee and then distract us by scapegoating people who are new to this country. You have talked to some of these folks. You have folks, as mm -hmm. I said, in, in your church seeking asylum. What do they tell you? Why do they come here? I mean, they come to Tennessee for the same reason that anyone moves anywhere, simply because they want gainful employment, simply because they find it to be a, an attractive place to live. And it's no secret that people across our country and across the world find Nashville especially to be a place that is an excellent place to raise a family. How does the demonization of this issue mm -hmm. stop? How does it get mm -hmm. back to the humani human humanity, humanity of it, excuse mm -hmm. me, that this is about people? Yes, the issue needs to be solved. Mm -hmm. There needs to be some hard choices made, but we're dealing with human beings. Absolutely. And, you know, my, my ask of everyone, of everyone in Tennessee is actually very old fashioned advice, which is that you ought to get to know your neighbors. Sometimes when we talk about immigration, it feels like we're talking somewhere about somewhere really far away. But in fact, no matter where you live, whether you live in the center of Nashville or Antioch or Franklin, there are immigrants in your community all around you. And so my encouragement for everyone is to meet their neighbors and get to know them and realize that we have so much more in common than we could ever, um, that we ever have separating us. Pastor Robin Lovett, Owen, appreciate very much your time. Yes, and your Thank insight. you Thanks so much for the for conversation. Mm -hmm. Stay with us this week. Continue in a moment.